Hello, my fellow warriors, and I forgot I was going to dodge out of here before uh, I started this video. Anyways, um, yeah, welcome back to Falscar. We are still in this one dungeon, which is a freaking cool dungeon, but it's still the same dungeon. Okay, so I got to remember where I came in at. Okay, I have Mill Valley. Okay, so I'm going over there. All right. So yeah, in in case you're just jumping on this video, I highly encourage you to go back about six, seven videos to the beginning of this because this is one huge dungeon. That wait, can I go up there? What's up there? Is there anything up there? No, there is not. Okay. Anyway. Um, but yeah. The, this, oh, there you are. There you are. I knew it. Oh, he's not dead yet. Now you did. I owned your face. Okay. Anyways. Um, a couple of you guys. I didn't work out the way I wanted it to. How did I not hit one of you? Oh my gosh. Seriously. Anyways, but yeah, it transitioned from looking like it was going to be a standard basic cave with um, with just bandits in it to ancient Nordic ruins to a catacomb to oh wow, there's Draugr in here. What the crap is the deal with this place? Please give me literature or something that tells me the history behind this. I'm so fascinated by this. And you're just, you're driving me insane by not telling me. Oh, hi. Why did that not work? Oh my gosh, I cannot fire an arrow all of a sudden. There we go. Well, the rest of them are coming, guys, just so you know. I think. Yep. Good griefs, like the movie Arachnophobia. Okay. Oh, I just wasted so many arrows. Because I can't aim. Okay. But yeah, and then it transitioned to, it, for, for a couple seconds, an ice cave. And then it went to these Dwemer ruins. And then it turned into a mix of Dwemer ruins and, uh, and Nordic ruins. And I'm just trying to figure out what was this place. Fade other. Oh, I can make others invisible. That's cool. I'll go ahead and use that before I forget. Wait, oh, there it is. Oh, I already know that one. Never mind. Yeah. I can get all kinds of soul gems, though. That's neat. But yeah, so I'm desperately wanting to find out what happened in this place. Fury of Flames is sounds like something I don't have yet. Uh, yes. Don't know what it does. But I'm sure it's cool. Oh, this is... Oh, this is something. This is something. 
Oh yeah, this is most definitely something. Wonder where the controls for this is. Or if there is even a control for it. Kinda wondering. I mean, I don't know why they put it to, oh wait, is the control like right next to the Centurion thing? Disaster at... Oh! Oh, oh, oh! What is this? Oh, no, this is... This is about uh, the Empire invading uh, Akavir. Well, that does me no good. That's not this. Why do the Dwemer have Brief History of the Empire books? That makes no sense. Unless it belonged to the people that raided this place or whatever they were doing. Oh, I want to know what's going on here so bad. Oh, it looks like I found a way out. What is. Oh. Wait, what? Oh. What the crap? So it transitions into yet another Nordic crew, or I mean, uh, Dwemer Ruin? What the? I'm confused. Somebody didn't like that face. Who didn't like your face? Actually, this is just weird. Dwemer always build their dwellings underground. Why did they build some above ground? That makes no sense. What is this place? Wait, hold on. Wait, 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 hold on. Where am I? Okay, this is the, okay. Uh, in 137 of the Third Era, the Dwemer automatons within Vizamunstead, however you say it, sprung to life, slaughtering all in their path. Only one Nord escaped alive. This is the first-hand account of the grim events that occurred on that day. It is told by sole survivor Yenevir Bayroff. I walked into the main chamber of the complex. I was preparing to file another chapter of history regarding the origins of Vizamunstead, the Dwemer structure that I stood in now. It was early in the morning, perhaps around 7.30, Vigas waved at me as I approached her. I nodded a friendly greeting in return. Filing yet another completed work, she asked. Why, yes, I am, I replied. I handed her the, the large leather-bound book. The front read Origins of Dwemer and Falskar in large gold-leaf letters. She gazed over the cover for a short while, then opened it and flicked through the pages, muttering to herself as she did. Very nice, she said, clearly intrigued by the size of the book and amount of knowledge it must contain. You can read it after 
Dinyar documents it, I said. She nodded with satisfaction and handed the book back. I continued on my way down to the main lexicon so the book could be transcribed into the records, finally gaining its place on the, sh on the shelves after so much hard work. I reached the bottom of the main stairs when there was a violent rumble and the entire chamber shook. Everyone exchanged worried glances. We all waited and after a short pause slowly began to resume our tasks. It was just as we were doing so that the doors at the top of the stairs burst open and a fellow scholar clambered through. He was on fire and he promptly ran right into the railing and flipped over it. As he did, he released a horrifying scream, smashing into the tables below. We all stared in horror when suddenly, through the door came three Dwemer spheres. They paused for a moment, clicking and clattering, and then at once they seemed to communicate. <clears throat> Two rolled off the balcony into the center of the room, and the third down the stairs straight at me. My immediate thought was to locate uh, Vigaz. How does her name Vigaz? Yeah. Anyway, she was pregnant with our first child. Oh, and I had to get her away from what was sure surely to become a massacre. I saw her across the chamber, huddled under a table. Two scholars stood over her, their spells ready, uh, already blasting away at spheres. Bad idea because Dwemer automatons are highly resistant to magic. You guys should know that as scholars. I broke out in a sprint towards her, running right past one of the spheres that had clambered down from the ledge above. I saw the second sphere heading straight for her. It raised its arm, mutilating one of the scholars before quickly doing the same to the other. I readied a spell in my hand I had to save her. Just before I reached the sphere, I released the pin-up magic from my palm. It exploded in front of me, the warm flames caressing my face. The sphere rolled back a few feet, but couldn't avoid me, and I slammed into it, knocking it over. I quickly fired another spell into its where ah, into where its head appeared to be. It screeched and swiveled, then lay still. I got up off the mangled contraption and looked over to Vigaz. In my haste, I had forgotten about the third sphere that had headed after me down the, the stairs. In my concentration, it had sped past me and was already to her. She screamed as it picked her up by the neck and looked menacingly towards me. I put my hands together, building the largest fireball I could, and then when I suddenly heard a deafening slam, I was distracted and turned my head to the left, only to see a massive Dwemer centurion looming over me. <clears throat> it clattered, shooting steam from its shoulder, and raised its hand. I had no choice but to unleash the fireball into its chest, cascading, fl cascading flames everywhere. But it had little effect, and the monstrosity brought its arm down across my chest, flinging me across the room and into the wall. I blacked out. When I awoke, the air was still with smoke, several, among several other vile scents. I looked up, and, my sharp, and a sharp pain shot down through my back. I gently worked myself free from some of the rubble covering me and I began forming a basic healing spell on my hands. I let the magic work itself over me and began feeling better. After a few minutes sitting alone in the chamber illuminated by only the faint glow of my spell, I stood up. I had no idea what time it was or if any dwarven automatons were near, but I knew one thing was certain. I had to get out. I quickly made my way to the main stairs, back through the door from where my inflamed colleague had appeared earlier. I began my ascent towards the surface, pausing at every sound I heard and praying to the Nine that someone else had survived. You didn't even bother to go over and check to see where your wife was or your girlfriend, whatever she was. But my trip came to an abrupt halt when I discovered that the main entry tunnel had collapsed. I was struck unless, yes, I thought to myself, there was an elevator in the lower levels back across the main chamber. It went to the surface. I could use it to escape and bring word 
of what had happened to Amber Creek. I worked my way back to the main cham- into the main chamber, the smell now apparently rotting flesh. I had started down the steps when a group of dwarven spiders appeared at the far end of the chamber. They clambered around a bit before scurrying back down the hallway. I made my way across the chamber to the far hall. The lexicon was just ahead and in a small hallway off the room, off that room, the elevator I needed to reach. However, as I entered the final large chamber, I froze. In the center of the room was the centurion. It stood there, quietly rumbling. I made my way carefully along the wall as to stay as far away from it as possible. I had made it about halfway to the hallway when the centurion abruptly snapped up, its head searching the room. I then heard a loud clattering behind me and was horrified to see the small group of spider bots heading directly towards me. The centurion then turned around and began walking straight for me as well. The the centurion shrieked as it approached, and with its first call, at least a dozen more spider bots filtered into the room, along with a couple spheres. I broke out into a hard sprint for the second time that day, heading straight for the elevator. The centurion picked up speed, rushing to cut me off. It crushed spider bots under its feet as it ran and swatted spheres aside. I threw a few fireballs at it, but they erupted around it, doing absolutely nothing. Oh, man. This guy was very... had a lot to say, apparently. I ran faster, and the Centurion powered ahead at full speed. If it caught me, it was going to tear me apart. As I neared the hallway, so did the Centurion, and I closed my eyes and leaned forward even further. I charged another spell into my palms this time of ice. Just as I reached the entrance to the hallway, I dove into it. Time seemed to slow. I opened my eyes to see the centurion just feet away, bringing up its arm to swat me down like a fly. It roared with a rage that seemed almost human among its clattering gears and grunting pistons. Just as I passed through the horizon of the opening, I aimed my hands directly at its chest and let the spell go. I heard an impact, I heard an impact, a frigid blast and spine-shattering shock hit me, boosting me into the hallway. Ice shards rained down upon me and I covered my face and yelled as I was blasted with freezing air and razor-sharp ice. As soon as the barrage ended, I got to my feet and turned to face the doorway. To my luck, the centurion was just big enough to get jammed in the opening. It sat there, calmly grinding as its red eyes staring me down. I wondered why it wasn't swatting at me. Then I realized my spell had been amplified. The intensity built up along with my own adrenaline. The centurion was frozen in place. It couldn't move. I sighed with relief and headed down the hallway. I entered the elevator and pulled the lever. As it began grinding and sprung into life, I leaned up against the wall and slid down to the floor. I stared down the hall as the centurion continued to fix its gaze on me. The elevator jolted and began moving upward. I watched as the hallway lowered and the centurion slipped out of sight. After what seemed like an eternity, the sliding walls in front of me burst open to reveal daylight. I slowly got up, opening the gate, and walked out of the elevator. I made it perhaps 15 feet before I collapsed and passed out. When I woke up, I was in the care of a hunter and out for the afternoon, or a care of, in care of a hunter out for the afternoon from Amber Creek. Oh my gosh, dude, how much more? Okay. That was almost 40 years ago. 40 years of rebuilding what, what I could. The events of that day shattered my spirit, and in a way that meant most of, of the knowledge I had spent so long learning was gone from my mind. I rewrote what I could to the best of my abilities, but the books that resulted were far fewer and the le- and less detailed than those contained within yeah, whatever the name of the place is. Not a single other person emerged from those depths. I was the only one to survive. To this day, I haven't a clue what caused the dark awakening in that place. We lived, we lived in the hollowed halls of that place for so long, 
Even my elaborate studies of its history are no help in finding the cause of our misfortune. Perhaps someday someone can return. With any luck, they will find a bastion of knowledge and history, the likes of which could not be found anywhere, anywhere else in the great land of Falskar. That's pretty freaking cool. Okay, so I know what the deal was. Ooh. Take that. So, all right, so I know what the deal was with. Um, yeah, thunder. So I know what the deal was with the. Um, I'm gonna search this other residence before I end this video. But. So I know what the deal was with the bodies and the massacre that looked like had happened. But that still doesn't explain... Wait, is that... An, uh, ooh, fish barrel, yeah. Um, that still doesn't explain why there are eight... Uh, Ancient Nordic ruins. I almost said alien ruins again. Ancient Nordic ruins um, mixed in with Dwemer ruins. That makes no sense. Never work on a farm. They are always full of tools and hoes. Those hoes are real pain to use. Never get them. Absorption. Dwemer I do an work. Okay. I do believe that's it. Alright. That's it for this episode of Falscar. This, this place is so intriguing and yet there's no... I almost want to go Maybe back down in there. Yes, it does. Shut up, Inigo. He In the book, he said that, you know, that place is a bastion of knowledge, you know, that he hopes that one day... Somebody will go in there and will basically recover the knowledge that was lost. It makes me wonder if there's not some way to get, you know, all the the uh, the knowledge that they had accumulated while they were there. I don't know. I I might go back down in there and look around in between videos just to see. But for right now, thank you for joining me on this episode of Falscar. I am the Holy Warrior. God bless you all.